Alrighty, I have to choose between either being able to uh, mobilely uh, switch us or hold my beer. Decisions. <laughs> <laughs> the crowd has spoken. <laughs> All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am here to talk about uh, how to predict layoffs and, uh, and trouble or potential trouble at your company and the different ways in which you can do so. So, first point, check the news. Uh, get, <laughs> thank you. I wasn't sure if that would work or if anyone in this audience would know who the hell they were. <laughs> so uh, just first off, what I do is I get Google Reader and I subscribe to all the game news sites that I can, as long as they're not Kotaku, which is a filthy, trashy tabloid. <laughs> Again, wasn't sure that one would go over. <laughs> But every day I go onto these websites and I just skim through the headlines to find out, okay, what's this company releasing? How are they doing? Uh, what, are, like, uh, what are potential problems that are cropping up? Uh, you'll see something in the news about, let's say, a recent MMO that, uh, whose publisher was asking if somebody else could help them pay for it and finish it, who then very quickly afterward became a multiplayer game and laid off uh, about half their studio. <laughs> Being able to identify these signs ahead of time, they can be, <laughs> they can be, uh, they can be kind of obvious uh, in, in retrospect, uh, but really, it's a matter of piecing together different, disparate pieces of information and trying to make predictions based on that. Uh, another one recently was, let's see, uh, in another MMO that just lost 25% of its subscribers in two months and made an announcement shortly thereafter. Uh, that there's going to be an unspecified very large number of layoffs. So that's a that's a pretty slam dunk sign. <laughs> there, are, there are a lot of smaller things about, uh, let's say, uh, budgets being cut or, uh, uh, you know, the studio's restructuring. Uh, you, you want to take a look at, like, what studios in, uh, in that publisher's portfolio are likely to be cut loose based on their su uh, success or lack thereof in the market. So really, just checking the news and uh, keeping abreast of this kind of thing, even if it's just skimming headlines for 15 minutes a day, can still give you an overall view of the state of the industry uh, and where things may or may not go. Another one, watch your publisher's stock. This uh, ties very much into what I was saying before. Uh, I use Google Finance, which is not only a way to monitor your publisher's stock and the way it goes up or down and how it trends over time, but they also uh, will map out specific you know, spikes or, uh, or uh, dramatic plummeting in your publisher's stock and tie that to individual news stories. Say, uh, so THQ stock went up about, I think, 10 to 15 cents when they announced Company of Heroes 2 was going to come out, and which was a good thing for the stock. but. Uh, they're down under a dollar, which means they're, uh, at, uh, they're at risk of being delisted from the NASDAQ, which is a death knell for a company. You can dig into this as deeply as you'd like to or not. And again, it's not a hard and sure sign that things are going to go horribly, horribly wrong. But if you pay attention to it enough over time, you can kind of detect trends of stock upticks, stock downticks, and knowing what kind of news influences that sort of thing and how that may affect the, sh the stockholders' confidence in the company. And these are all the uh, stock tickers of all the different companies that I track, of all the major publishers. So what to look for in stock movements. How was their last quarter? Every quarter they're legally obligated to explain exactly how much money they made or lost, what their best products were or weren't, and, uh, and what, they, uh, what they have in development. Even if it's an unannounced project, they'll sort of hint at this or that. Every quarter it's absolutely worth looking for these and updating your resume and portfolio just as a matter of course. Uh, how's their performance over the last year, or over the last five years? Granted, we had an absolute, our economy just crapped the bed. So a lot of publishers just completely uh, went down the, I mean, almost went down the tubes uh, a few years ago, so it's not the best indication, but something to look at. Uh, as far as their sales projections go from quarter to quarter, are they ever accurate? Do they ever map out to what the actual reality is? How do they talk about it? And does any of it ring in the slightest bit true? And do their stock price totally crater? And what quarter do they always have layoffs? Hint, most of them. <laughs> so read press releases. Is there a common pattern between the press releases? Like what is, so from when a, a project is announced all the way up to release and post-release, what's the pattern? Like uh, the first release may say, this game will sell 50 billion copies. We've never been excited in our life. We're doing coke like crazy. Oh, it's nuts, man. <laughs> And then, uh, then, oh, well, actually, there's a delay, but no, we're creatively restructuring the project. Everything's going to be fine. Just like, seriously, bro, don't worry about it, man. 
then after it's released. So, um, well, fail, sales fell short of expectations. We still have faith in the project. Then shortly thereafter, blah, blah, strategic restructuring. Our CEO is going to take a dollar and pay for the next month. And uh, by the way, 300 jobs are gone. Just track these press releases over time. Understand what lies are contained within. But just look for repeated patterns in the way they communicate and how frequently they do it. You can glean a lot from that. So know your publisher's product catalog. I couldn't find an image for this. <laughs> <laughs> so your publisher. What other studios are published uh, or like publishing, uh, or publishing other titles? Uh, which studios have good or bad reputations? Uh, do their games compete with yours? Is it the same genre, a similar genre? Will, your, uh, will their sales cannibalize yours or vice versa? What could happen there? Uh, when do those games ship? Are they going to ship against your game? Is that going to affect the marketing dollars that your publisher could put into your game, but will put into the other game instead because they think it's going to uh, be more successful? Something to think about. What happens when a studio misses a date, historically, in your organization, uh, like in your publisher? Like, do they throw more money at it? They start laying people off? They start dramatically cutting the scope of the game? If you know other people in the publisher, uh, like in that publisher's family, just make friends at other studios or published by the same company and swap stories. Go out for a beer. That's where the real conversation happens. And finally, if it gets real, which studio should be shut down? Awkward question, especially if it's yours. <laughs> But it's, it's a very realistic question that you should ask. I, yeah. I <laughs> <clears throat> so know your genre. What genre is your game? Does that genre uh, sell particularly well? Like, for example, fantasy MMOs sell much better than sci-fi or other esoteric MMOs, just generally speaking. It's a lot more commercially successful. But I mean, outside of MMOs, like, how well do other games in your genre sell? Uh, who's your competition, either within or without your publisher? Are you competing with them head on? Are, uh, are you trying to find a new angle on that? How well do you think you can compete against them based on your literally inside knowledge of that game and its development? Just ask yourself really tough questions and then uh, find out how well it compares. Like, are they clearly just better than you? Are you doing something different enough to make a difference? And are you releasing against them? Like the, the holiday season, I mean, it's like, uh, like Call of Honor, Medal of Duty. Um, I, <laughs> um, uh, Field battle. I ran out, but they're all they're all released in such a tight time frame. They're all cannibalizing each other's sales, and it's 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 not really anything you can do a damn thing about. But it's something to still think about and be a good time to polish up your resume. Know your company. Once more. <laughs> so when did your company last ship a game? Did it sell? Did it review well? Did people like it? Is it like purely critical success? Is it commercial success? Like how much of a long tail did it have? Did it just fizzle out immediately because it was facing other competition? Um, what about the game your company shipped prior to that? How did that do? Uh, and, and just keep going back through the catalog. Uh, find out, did you ship on time? Did you ship late? Were there layoffs? Just ask uncomfortable questions, and preferably in a bark type setting because people are going to be a lot more amenable toward opening up like that. I swear I'm not pimping myself. It's just a really good place to talk. <laughs> and this one, I, every time I've done an interview, it's really irritated the hell out of people at the studio that I'm, they're interviewing me. I ask them, how long do people stay at your company on average? What is your longest standing employee? Like, what's the middle of the range? Do people leave within six months, year, two years, three years? They'll give you an idea of how well they're able to, uh, to retain talent. And especially these days, if they have a very, very high degree of churn, that's something to look at. Like, it's hard enough to find a job in this industry right now. If people are just escaping, then it's, that's another, another thing to consider and another reason to polish your resume and update your portfolio. Know who runs your company. So who are the principals of your company? Who are the founders? What's their history? Check LinkedIn, check Moby Games, uh, Google, find a blog, find a website, uh, try and find other people that know them, ask them questions. Just sort of do like a back channel interview, of, uh, in a sense, and build a picture of who your founders are. What did they ship before? How well did it do? How long have they been a leader or a manager? Is this their first gig? Have they ever done anything like this, like this before? And granted, I mean, people do get promoted. Uh, I mean, promote upward, uh, regardless of whether, whether they actually have skill. <laughs> and yeah, but I mean, people can grow into a role. So just by virtue of the fact that they haven't necessarily been a leader, a manager, a director for that long, doesn't mean they suck. 
If it's something good to know, maybe they're just going through learning pains and they're really trying to learn but still making mistakes. So don't always go for glass half empty. Just piece together a different piece of information and just consider it rationally. And how long do they stay at a company based on their LinkedIn and Moby Games? That's, that could be another sign. If it's, a it's, if it's a long string of really, really short stays at a company, you know, find out, was it a layoff? Was it a studio closure? Was it like a big management shakeup? Did like 700 people leave the company and start another one called Respawn Entertainment after, your publish after their publisher didn't pay them royalties and one of the best selling games of all time? <laughs> These things happen. Which one was that, like Battlefield of Honor? <laughs> I, <laughs> you'll notice I went from slide seven to nine. Uh, eight was deemed uh, too hot for the micro talks. Thanks, John. <laughs> Visit my website later, johnjones.com. <laughs> so I'll wrap up. So has the team worked together before? Have they worked together as a group or in tiny clicks? Uh, was like the design team from another studio here in town. Again, LinkedIn, Moby Games. What was the last thing they shipped? How old did that do? And uh, this is especially, uh, especially salient point for Austin, where a lot of the same people tend to stay together and not ship games that do very well. But they may work together really well, but may not necessarily have a track record for success. Uncomfortable truth, but that's something to think about. And ultimately, just take care of yourself. Keep your eyes open, don't panic, just piece together these different pieces of information and just consider them against one another and don't take any one single sign to be the end of the world. And I'm actually done almost on time.